It little profits that an idle king, by this still hearth among these barren crags, matched with an aged wife, I meet and dole unequal laws unto a savage race that hoard and sleep and feed and know not me. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I have enjoyed greatly, have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone. What is a normal family these days? I thought mine was until Dad had an affair and eventually separated from Mum. We were a happy family, but Dad had his problems. He now lives alone by the seaside, is obsessed with motorbikes, has joined this motorcycle club called Ulysses, and has a girlfriend, even though he is still married to Mum. I feel loyal to Mum, but I need to spend some time with Dad to understand our situation. Dad has told us he has bipolar depression, but he hasn't yet shown any understanding of the hurt and confusion he has caused our family. Yeah, I've polished all these spokes by hand, and this, where when I do that one is the pristine uh, one for history that you'll sell at a great profit one day. That's another bike. It's got a blown up motor there. That motor looks shit house, but it's not. And I've got a fairing, as you can see on the wall, and the mudguards. I'm going to make it into a cafe racer. My version, my paint job. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Get this, you might need it as well. Dad has rebuilt this bike for me, even though I haven't ridden since my motorcycle accident six years ago. I don't need to line it up, no. If you be muscle, yeah, from the back, yeah. and I'll do the steering. Push her up. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. Dad joined the Ulysses Motorcycle Club around the time he left home. Their enthusiasm for life and motorbikes is infectious. Well done. Do you notice the number of people that come up specifically and say, oh, you're with the Ulysses Club. I know someone in the Ulysses Club. Mm. It's great. The fact that you wear the Ulysses Club badge is now a, a sort of a a symbol of friendship and fellowship. Ooh. People around Australia are learning it. <laughs> Lovely. Real estate for this. When I joined Ulysses, well, it was just a, just a thing to do. I was at the age and uh, they looked like a, a lot of fun, a lot of support. And uh, I needed it at that stage, being on a, you know, being 50 on a 250cc bike, you need a bit of support. You do things that pretty disgraceful at times, um, but uh, you don't, you care about things, but you sort of think, well, you know, you live one day at a time, so yeah, you live dangerously. We're disgraceful sometimes, but uh, but at the appropriate times, and uh, we can all behave if we really want to. It's good, clean fun, but it's annoying the hell out of others while you're doing it, and I do that very well. <laughs> <laughs> How would you socialise without the Ulysses group? Well, at the moment we don't. I mean, the Ulysses group's our life. <laughs> All those people going to do the run, you'll get each one of the, each get one of these inside 
It's the quiz questions and the map. And then the next one is so let's get to the, We've got to get to the highway yeah. where we turn up. Yeah, but that doesn't say what sector it's in. You see the question, Poorhouse Water. Do you know what this is? What's that, Ryan? Yeah, I don't know what the three plus three is, but it's three. it must be three three words. Three, three, three. Here, you must have two words. I don't know what the seven are. Uh, I don't know. Help, Steve! <laughs> <laughs> The three, three, three. Does that What's mean that anything? Yeah. What? It's <laughs> three words of three letters each. Well, hold on. That's four. So, four oh, and four. Okay. Oh yeah, so it is. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to have a major blue over this. No, we're not. We will. We will. <laughs> Make sure the navigator gets it. Oh, you navigate. I'm navigating oh. by his bloody oh. self. Oh, you'll be right. You'll be. Right. He won't be. <laughs> <laughs> Dad is riding with his girlfriend, Chris. They met in a health food store a few years ago. She's a vegetarian, a Buddhist, and a biker. He's, he's a seeker. He's a seeker of life, of journeys, and not just the physical ones, but journeying through knowledge and the human experience. He thought there's a real compliment, and I said, I, he, I thought he flirted with life, which he does. He has an exuberance for it, in spite of his own challenges. He has this real exuberance for life. We got the yay. Look, we got the yay. Oh, forget it. 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 I never thought I would be camping with Dad and his girlfriend. Chris is great, but I can't help wishing it was Mum here. What's it doing? It's all right. Oh, that's better. Brilliantly. Which you're so quite welcome to kind of have. No, no. Oh, I got plenty of stuff. I bought heaps of tomatoes out of the garden. Yeah, we've got from tomatoes, home. avocados too. But we've got bring. some salad dressing. Apple cucumbers. Cucumbers too. Out of my garden. No, not out of your garden. Um. So are you going to get some of this? Yep, yeah, I will later. No, not later now, thank you. Yeah, my dirty pet. Yes, I do. Don't get the grass in it. This is one of the nicest little innovations to take on a camp. Yeah, I love, I love me cracked pepper. It's these little luxuries that make them different. Sound a bit buggered in there, Chris. Well. All those female muscles. <laughs> New champ. I didn't wear my other t-shirt. It's this one's quieter. Bag lady. Yeah. Yep. On a mission from the goddess. The other one says, "What? Real women don't cop shit." That's right. But I thought it'd be a little bit too provocative. Ulysses was this bloke who, who got to this age like in his midlife and said, bugger all this, I'm gonna leave. I've had, I've had enough of being king. Yeah. My sons yeah. can look after things. Yeah. And I, I think I wanna go off for another bit of adventure before me days are over. Don't wanna rust yeah. unburnished. What, what is that like? Death closes in, like an awareness of death. 
sometimes it reminds me of when 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 Dad like left our family. Was he think he left? He waited. I knew he was unhappy he, yonks ago. You could tell. Yeah, he's told me the story. About I don't know. About staying and doing the honourable thing and trying to get the yeah. relationship to work and and trying again and again and. Yeah. So, I mean, he didn't just stay to do the right thing by you children. He loves your mother. Yeah. Very deeply and dearly. And, yeah, but he still struggles with that. Mm. Yeah, I guess. I... From what he said to me, he does. Yeah. And I believe him. Yeah. There's a thing when you're a teenager, you don't notice what's going around yet because you and your own bloody caught up world. I think it just happened so fast and we just went, oi. <laughs> and I thought like I'd turn eight. No, I turned uh, 22 by the time he'd left. Yeah, well, he was making... And I thought, does that mean I'm in charge of the family now, you know, being the eldest? And it was, it was quite difficult, I think. He wanted to make sure that you're all provided for. And in the process, he was trying to get the relationship to work, I would say. He just didn't just walk away from it. He really fought hard. He's an honourable man. He is, and I respect him, like, so much. It's just... Um... But that isn't, that isn't to say he's not without his faults. I mean, he can be grumpy, he can be a pain in the ass, and you don't want to be around him. I mean, hey, we all do that, don't we? Yeah, but he's just really, really good at it. <laughs> It's been photographed all over there. You ain't seen nothing yet. There we go. Twins. Yeah, but he hasn't seen this one yet. <laughs> <laughs> and then I grab me bottle of scotch. This is the only way I can stay sober. <laughs> because I've got a, a half measure and a full measure, but I always go for a full measure. And I pour me full measure in there. I normally do this when I'm sober. <laughs> and then I put me funnel in the top, and then I pour me scotch in. <laughs> then I put two of those in to every can, and by the end of the night, I know how many uh, how many I've gone through. But he lines up a bloke walking along Collins Street and drops a brick. Bully brick! Otherwise, said, "Yeah, he was absolutely white. Absolutely white." Well, that's the bike Dominic's got done for him. Yeah. It's. All done up, his helmet's got stars all yeah. over the bloody things yeah. and all that. Yeah, you're talking my language now. We went to yeah. Easy Rider again the other night down in the Botanical Gardens in Melbourne. All right. And all I could remember of Easy Rider, because I'd always watched it absolutely pissed, yeah. stone out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched it sober this time, and yeah. I, I didn't think I was watching the same bloody movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good old. But you can relate just oh, to the bike. Anything that's got a bike in yeah, it, you can relate to yeah. it. Absolutely. Every now and then, Dad returns home for a Sunday roast. He always looks a bit uneasy, as if we are accusing him of something. Are you going to carve the roast? No. It's your job, mate. I've handed the scepter over to you, remember? <laughs> backwards and forwards until it goes through. Do you reckon mm. you can manage that? See how that happens? Yeah. <sighs> Give it a go. And be creative about thicknesses. Nice combinations. Oh, brilliant. Yep. 
Lockie, we've got some meat for you, mate. That shut him up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is this stuffing? The grandparents, all the kids, mum and dad, and now my sister's baby Lachlan. Dad still takes his seat at the head of the table. We compete for crispy potatoes and then set about swapping jokes and old stories. Did you just want it straight or a bit of orange juice? Zachary. Zachary. But they said they were going to chop me leg. Like the hospital, because um, mm. usually with motorcycle accidents, it's if that happens, it gets infected really quickly, and it, <coughs> off with your leg. But I was on so much morphine that I just thought, yeah. I'm going to be a one-legged rock climber, kayaking, Olympics <laughs> kayaking, and uh, that's when I, that's when you heard that on the phone you figured it out that I was delirious or something, yeah? Yeah. What they saw was a, a young bloke with hair down his back, with a ring through his nose in black leather, in leather, <laughs> off a motorbike. So what do they immediately assume? Oh, we've got a bloody doped out clown here. Plus I had saved the forests on my oh, motorcycle yeah. helmet. It doesn't, doesn't go down good. Driving around Tassie. It was awful to get the phone call. It was really horrible being so far away, because you really just wanted to you know, put your arm around and say, oh, it's OK, and get the nice little treats and things like this for you. Yes. But, you no, and the dad was over there and he was able to organise the doctors and things like that, that was fine. I just remember all the doctors and nurses at one point hanging out the front looking at your x-rays and then poking their head in looking at you and coming back and looking at their x-rays. <laughs> at any rate, we all survived it, didn't we? Played <laughs> dumb. He'd come home. Uh, with the boys from karate <laughs> and yep yeah, I'd be pulled out and I was the little waitress you know the thumb up to their things uh, so we old dad's out, big we? deep and meaning discussions and he's so trashed and you can't hear him and it's like two in the morning and I'm like can I go to school that's why I wag dad <laughs> it's your fault I remember coming back at the end of my first term at night and just thinking, that's it, I've got to deal with this. So I actually went and had a big, long um, session with Dad. Like, I didn't I didn't know a lot of stuff about the summer stuff. I didn't know any, what's, any of that. What's that? About, you know, uh, some other lady on the scene. I didn't I didn't see any of that. Yeah. But I knew it was there. Because what you guys had said. Yeah, we sort of knew. <clears throat> but we had to come back and pretend it didn't happen. Yeah. So I just um, asked him about it, and he told me straight up which was pretty cool. That's what I needed to hear. So yeah. you guys have all confronted him? Yep. You haven't. No. <laughs> have you had, yeah, have had, you had it out with yeah, him? Yeah, I've had it out with him. Yeah. Where? Huh? Where oh, about a time and I just basically just laid him down because I used to go around to the other missus's house. I knew where she lived and every time I'd come home pissed from town I'd just stone her house with rocks and trash her car and <laughs> really <Yeah. laughs> bloody bargain. That, that was my that was my way of dealing with it, I think. And and then when I sat down with Dad, I basically said, "Look, if if it ever comes to a, will you come back to Mum? If you ever do it again, I'm taking you out the back and sorting it out." But you know, that's basically how I laid down the rules. You know. Oh, I'm glad you guys have dealt with it. I'm doing well. No, I know you did, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us I about did it. it. Well, no, I don't want to tell about that. Thanks. No, probably because I haven't come to terms with it. You felt pretty lonely, didn't you? Yeah, I did probably because I'd seen pretty much all of it. We knew the women. I'd seen Mum. I'd seen the tears. I still have moments where I think back on how I treated you kids and Helen and I think of the things I did and in my knowledge now I really hate the thought that I could do that. Yet I know at the time 
I was basically doing the best I could, but to forgive myself for those behaviours. I can remember using my, my skills of karate. I remember once not hitting you, but going over your body very quickly with the techniques, the elbow to the head, the knee, the whole thing, and I just went up, and you just stood there in terror. And I was showing you that if I wanted to, what I could do to you. Yeah, well, he wasn't, he wasn't violent, but he had that ability to. Yeah, that, um, that's what put it was. Fear into you. The intimidation more than the actual doing, wasn't it? Yeah. All we knew was that Dad had to do. Uh, was it 40 fights? So it was our chance to uh, to see Dad get the crap beaten out of him, you know. <laughs> So of course we're barracking for, for everyone else who we knew. Who up against that. Yeah. <laughs> go, Danny. Yeah, go, Danny. Go, Danny. Take him in the head. Yeah. <laughs> drop him. Drop yeah. him. <laughs> so why? Why were we you barracking for them to to beat the crap out of Dad for? Because we could. Perry Park overlooks the farmlands where my dad lived as a boy. From the top you can see the old farmhouse, the shortcut he took to school and the paddocks where he went rabbiting with Pa. I saw my father as the most heroic man, I mean man, capital M, capital A, capital N, that he, he gave up his farm and he's, he's, he worked all his life for that farm and he gave that up because of um, his children. Mm. And he worked his butt off to put them through school. I can't remember Dad ever having a dream after that. He didn't care about things. He cared that his family was fed. He'd put on a suit on Sundays to go to church. But I can't remember Dad having entertainment of any sort. He worked. He came home, ate with his family, lived with his family. Mm. And I got, went up to Dad down the backyard and I said, Dad, I need to say something. He said, what? I said, Dad, I love you. And I put my arms around him to give him a hug. And I thought he was going to hook me. I thought, geez. He said, he pushed me away. He said, you're a burk. You don't do that. He said, of course I know that. Don't need to say it. And that was it. We never discussed it again. It's yours, mate. It may be my baby, but you're riding it. Yeah. I'll put her up in the centre stand, it'll be easy to work on. See, all we did here was um, a good paint job. I did all the basic preparation myself, like that. I grinded it all back, cleaned it back to bare metal. Then he did the, um, the paint, the base paint. Then I did all the graphics. <laughs> oh, yeah. You've got me completely decked out. Gotcha. I'm ready to get back on the horse. Yep, back on the horse. A Yamaha 750cc horse. I'm very excited to be on the road with Dad. We are riding to Kangaroo Island, his special place. I wouldn't mind. Um, go. You, gotta, you want to go to the Great Ocean, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful on there. That's really what we're going to watch. And then we shoot up. This is just a great long stretch of nothing. This trip will give me the opportunity to really talk to Dad about our family. He's done a good job of fixing up this bike for me, but I feel a bit embarrassed riding a bike decorated pretty little stars and comets, and the matching helmet. 
I am the Not So Easy Rider. Good. Yep. Good. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I started feeling at one with the bike. You know that little gentle turn switch. Yep. That's where I felt really well. Good. Otherwise, I was kind of breaking as I was going in the curves. The, the speeds you were doing, you're getting, you're getting it perfect. You're getting in the right gear, which is great. You got it right. And tonight we'll talk about lines into corners. Ah oh, man, you you're zooming ahead at a great rate. There's, there's How's the old baby going? Um, oh, it's, it sounds great and all that, but the taco went out before. Did it? Yeah, well, uh, it's not going. And, and there's no um, neutral light. Like, you, you try whacking it in the neutral and the neutral light doesn't go, so some wires fell out of it. Um, yeah, that's possible. In fact, it's probable. In fact, could it be? Highly likely. You don't really. I mean, at lights, we're not. There's not a light between here and the South no. Australian border. Got no blinkers, got, got no, no lights. Who cares? Yeah. We're doing a, a ride with the club up to, to Wagga. We're riding along in a pack and there's this one guy in a pack who's moving in and out and he's going from side to side, having a real ball. And I thought, this is a young hoon that we've got in our midst. And, midst, and I thought, I've got to meet this guy at the next servo. We pulled up at a place like this to get petrol and this guy stopped and I thought he'd jump off his bike. He sort of stretches his leg out and he sort of gives it a rub. Stretches the other leg out and gives it a rubber. Something he's biking usually. Rubs his legs a bit, shakes them out, takes his helmet off, and it's this guy 80 plus. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and then of course I got to know him and he's been in he's 83 years of age. Unbelievable. Oh, he's a legend, Alan. I, I was riding up, or riding one of the bikes up to um, Newcastle to visit my son. And uh, I stopped to uh, for a pit stop at Windsor, and I met three blokes on motorcycles who just joined a crowd called the Ulysses Club. And uh, when I came back home, I I, I got an app I got a, 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 an application form from them. When I got back home, I signed up and joined the Ulysses Club. So I carry a spare helmet, you see, so because you've often got a uh, you know a young lass that wants to go to the next hostel or something, so yeah. she just hops on the back and, and you take her along. I've had a lady friend here in Geelong that I come back to all the time, or she comes back to me, I don't know which. <laughs> but she's just entered a nursing home, so... Uh, you go visit her there? I, I visit her in the nursing home, yeah. What's it like in there? Oh, I don't want to go there. Most of them are in a very... You know, they're just sort of living out their last days of their lives and uh, with nothing to look forward to. You know, I don't want to finish up in a nursing home. If I get to that stage, I hope someone shoots me, you know. It's, <laughs> I'll ride the bike as long as I can, yeah. yeah. Yesterday was a hard day's ride. 
with no time to stop and talk. But Dad's loving it. He is so bloody friendly. He's been waving to every bike that passes, and there's bikes all over these roads. Even the caravan park owner rides around on a rusty old Harley. Yeah. Here comes our man. Here comes the Harley boy. Whoa. Have a look at that engraved in there. It's a dragon. Yeah. Well, when are you going to put in the effort yeah. and clean her up? Why don't there's a rat bite? <laughs> <laughs> it's pulling right to pieces and starting again. So. Yeah. Oh, become a collector's item, put in the museum. <laughs> yeah. That was a bit of fun. So. Oh, it's all I can see is hours and hours of great fun in the shed with that. <coughs> pulling yeah. her down and cleaning her up. And... Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That was really good. Enjoyed yeah. it. Have a good trip. We're going to have to pay a visit to your um, your friend in, where is it? Bachelor. Bachelor. Yeah. Yes. Who's that? He, he's going one direction around Australia and you're going the other. Yeah. He's a, another Ulysses. Yeah. Out and on the road. Yeah. He's promoting it wherever he goes. <laughs> good on him. Yeah, I'm doing the same. Yes, he is. Yeah, he's he's got the same grey hair, but he's a bit taller than you. But well, he's got the same twinkle in his eyes. It's funny about, thank you. It's funny <laughs> no, about the Ulysses that they all tend to be a little bit grey. Yeah, but well, they still seem to enjoy themselves. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Thank you very much. I've really Pleasure. enjoyed it. Pleasure. Have a good trip. I'll be back. Sorry. Bye. Dad was always a teacher, primary school teacher, karate teacher. He taught me how to play football and gave me lessons on Zen Buddhism while I was still an older boy. But when he took up reading the self-help books and pop psychology, he lost me as a student. I wanted to burn those books. The road less travelled, Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance, all those American guys with the square chins. Now. I can see he uses pop psychology as a shield. I want to be a missionary priest, as you know, so I went and studied for the priesthood. I didn't want that, and so I left. I got married, and Helen was absolutely brilliant for me as a wife. I, I've met someone I love dearly. And at that stage, we shared so much common ground. Her religious background, mine, and I suppose the next 25 years was a battle of, of chasing the dream. I'm always going to love Dad. Yeah. But I'm no longer in love with Dad. All right, yeah. There's to be in love with somebody, you have to nurture it and you have to um, really want it to work. But yeah, there's a, um, that word is nurturing is really important to me. I think Dad was quite categorically about it that he said that it, it is over, he doesn't want to come back, so that's what I accept, yeah. that he doesn't wish to be married to me anymore. So that's, there's no point in even thinking or dreaming or anything else because that's fruitless. But if he needed the boat a bike, and that's something that Dad's always needed, it was his own space. Yeah. And he's always had his own space to do what he's wanted to in it. Yeah. And, and there were times when Dad would want to go off by himself, so that was fine. I didn't need to go off away from the family. I was quite contented around the family. Being with someone that you love and having a great, wonderful feeling with them, with the knowledge that you were going to have a family with them mm. and share life and your life experiences with them, that person. That um, really special feeling of, of waiting at home and hearing the car or the motorbike come up and you know that particular sound and you think, oh, good. <laughs> They're coming, you, know, you can hear it coming up the road and, and things like that. It's, yeah. And that's a special feeling you only have for that particular person that you're married with, you have that relationship with. Mm. Well, you and Dad are still married now. Do you consider that? Like, you, you haven't... You're not divorced, but you live no, in No, I still consider it because I made the decision when Dad left not to take off my rings. Yeah. 
because I don't see myself as um, as breaking my marriage vows. I'm going to cry. <laughs> said to me, saw me down the street and said, oh, they saw me at church. And I said, yes. And we saw you go down to communion. And I said, yes. And, and I said, yes. Oh, we didn't think separated people could still go to communion. And my hands were kind of itching. <laughs> and so I, I thought of lots of things, smart replies I could have said afterwards. And I, I'm not really quick on the, on the, I just said at the time, church laws I've got nothing against separated people and for the second thing it's none of your business. I think we need as individuals and as a family to rewrite the book of what happens when families break down yeah. because families break down there's a big split between the husband and wife they divide the wealth down the middle the kids have to pick sides to support. Yeah. Where in our case it wasn't that at all. It was I had a sickness, and whether the family the family were probably at sea as to how to deal with my mental illness, because I certainly was. I didn't have a damn clue how to deal with it, and I needed to move away to have that time to find out how I could deal with it. And now the family can see me healthy and managing my situation, they can now look at me and say, yeah, we can relate to that guy again. But see, you've paid me the greatest privilege a son ever can. When, when I got off the booze, I used to worry about how I could explain to my children. And then when I diagnosed as mentally ill, I worried how I could explain my behavior. Not try and excuse it. And Ron used to say to me, Terry, just leave it in God's hands. And if you're sincere about your recovery and your kids, it'll happen for you. And it's happening. It's happening. What, now? Yeah, we're not forcing it. It's happening. That's wonderful. Oh, the first trip I made over here was, I was um, pretty much in deep depression. So I came over here and I I spent most of the time in a little room at a guest house. I was off on sick leave from school. I was still employed and I came away, so I just wanted to, um, to have space. Oh, this cliff, mate. This is this will do. This is where my funeral's going to be. What? You know the Viking funeral? Yeah. How the Vikings, kings, the Viking kings, they put them on a one of their boats, whatever they call them, and uh, they put the sail up, and as it heads out to sea, they set it alight, and his body is uh, cremated. I want you to set it up on the bike so that somehow my corpse rides the bike off the cliff at a great pace, out over the ocean, bursts into flames. <laughs> what do you reckon, eh? Uh, OK. Can you manage is that? Is it legal? You and I? Who cares? Who cares, yeah. yeah. Who cares? Actually, I'm making a joke of something that is very serious to me. This, um, the times when I was going through the meltdown and when I was off work and um, when I left home and the seriousness of all that, I um, often thought of riding off the cliff and it was a reality. But there were so many things that stopped me. Little things, family was one, you know, if, I could, if it could be done neatly and cleanly without hurting anybody, it would be a great thing to have done. But you can't do it without hurting people you love. They're, they're stuck with your bloody selfishness. I look good to the world, and yet in my head, and this is the thing with people that suffer mental illness, those looking at them say, there's nothing wrong with you that bloody good kick in the ass wouldn't fix, or pull up your socks and get on with it. To the person who's in that 
pays. It's buddy. Show me where my socks are. <laughs> I'll pull them up. I don't even know where my socks are. <laughs> but that's where biking comes in. <laughs> when I feel like that, I can put my helmet on, get in my leathers, and ride. Yeah. And there's there's an absolute mystical joy about riding, which is such an alive thing to do. You can't ride a bike and feel dead. Is this sleeping under the stars on an airbed? What more could I ask for? What's this, Dad? That's a cake. Where did this come from? Chris. Chris, you little champion, Chris, what is it? It's a fruit cake. Boil a fruit oh. cake. And she really cares about that. Always on the road. You can get tea, Dom. Just for you, Dom. All the things of your uh, needs. Hey. Trust Dad to bump into the only Ulysses member on Kangaroo Island. How do you have your tea, R Rod? Is it Rod? Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, you yeah I just haven't water got water sugar or... in them yet. I'm That's trying to find oh, it. Can... Yeah, go without it. Must be it. in the trailer. No, no drama. I can go without that. Yeah, I got put an ad in the paper for 404 Super Sports. Yeah. And uh, I picked up four and a box of a bike and a half. <laughs> I left Dad to talk bikes with Rod. Tomorrow is the day for me to confront Dad with my feelings about our family. He let me down when I was a boy, and I have to tell him. I've listened to him and his explanations. Now I want him to listen to me. Um, when I was like uh, 17 ish, I think it was, you might remember. Um, and we used to go to Summers Caravan Park every year, you know, the Caravan Park. <laughs> it, was, it was great, and we went there every year since I was like six yeah. or something. Perfect family. Perfect family, little cabin. Yep. You know, we'd all go down the beach and we'd go off snorkeling. But um, one night you, you sort of went off and uh, to 
back to Geelong, Mum said, and we just thought, oh, I don't know what you'd, you'd done to go, what, what you were up to. And um, I remember just lying in bed and late at night and just hearing, hearing Mum sort of sobbing in, the, um, in, in bed. And then I heard you arrive like early in the morning or something. <laughs> Must have been a big drive, I thought. And um, I, went, I crawled back into my bunk bed and you came in and you and, you and Mum just started talking softly, but I could hear, I could hear it all. And um, I heard Mum like, like crying and being really upset because you'd um, gone and visited what I heard her say about gone and gone with your girlfriend, some woman, and I just remember laying in bed. That was a real, you know, I'd never, heard, never knew, never knew, mm. nothing like that. It was like, it was a really, a time where I, the whole normal family thing crumbled for me. Yeah, I had to grow right up. to that Angie, you know that, don't you? Yeah, have you thought about how yeah. I felt or how I dealt no, with I it? I don't know how you felt. You never asked at the time. I know, I've been too scared to bring those things up because I didn't know. I knew you would probably hear something. And of course I was doing things that I was absolutely ashamed of. Like it's one thing to say oh, on the to... boat, yeah. you know, this process of um, uh, creating a new new relationship with our family so we can have a you know a great future is uh, to understand you that all us kids have got to understand you that's 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 right but and the others it's got to work both ways and you've got to understand us that's... and what we went through and you've got to start seeing things from our point of our start understanding how we felt then and I think I've got to listen to you a lot more and, and let you tell me that and I've got to hear you say it and not hide from it because I'm basically scared shitless of hearing the truth about those times. So what are you scared of? It, it just What things? The things that my children didn't think I was perfect. That my children saw me with feet of clay. And as, on the one hand, I want my children, I want you kids to see me as human. And on the other hand, I want you to see me as the perfect father, providing everything. And that's been a problem in my life. I've wanted to be perfect on one hand, yet be human on the other. That's a, it's been a terrible conflict. It's almost like you're seeing me as I really am. A man who tries, a man who's made a lot of blues, but I hope you see your father as a man who can get up off the floor and get on with it. And that's what we're doing now, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. I need more than anything to stop saying, Dom, understand me. Yeah. I can understand you too. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, I, I hear that loud and clear and I am so thankful that you're able to give me that lesson. So what is, like, what is? Like, just to... Like, what do you, how do you see it now? Like, how do you see me as a young boy? What do you think I went through? Enormous conflict and pain enormous anger and didn't know what in the hell to do with your anger or who, where it came from. And perhaps we were the same, Don. You had this bloody anger and people controlling you and you knew it was wrong. Mm. You didn't know what was wrong. Is that right? Yep. You didn't know what was wrong and that's, that's now. You need to hear me say that anger was perfectly right. The, the adults, specifically me, was letting you down. Yeah. Love you, son. Love you. <laughs> Come, my friends. Tis not too late to seek a new world to sail beyond the sunset and the baths of all the western stars until I die. It may be that the gulfs will wash us down. It may be we shall touch the Happy Isles and see the great Achilles whom we knew. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are now not that strength which in old days in moved, old heaven days moved earth, earth and heaven, that which we are, that which we are, we are. We are. One, equal One equal temper, temper. of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will, 
to strive, to seek, to find, and yet not to yield.